Today's the day we uh, come on in here and pick some squash. Uh, I'm going to compare the two squash themselves and look at the plants. Uh, and later on, after I taste the two side by side in comparison, I'll give you my opinion on which I like the best. If there is even a flavor uh, profile difference between the two. I don't suspect there is. Uh, but yeah, I'll let you know after we cook them up. So just by observation of looking at the plants, the straight neck summer squash, the plants are definitely better looking. They're greener, they're taller, they're definitely fuller. Uh, the slick pick squash from Haas is a shorter, more compact plant. Uh, it definitely isn't as tall or as bushy as the the yellow summer squash. Uh, as far as production goes, uh, before we get in here and start moving the leaves around and looking, uh, I would say the slick pick has more than doubled the production of the summer squash. Uh, for instance, just on this one plant back here that I can see is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squash that are, are actually already out and three or four flowers that are coming on. And on one of the summer squash, we have one, two, three, four squash with maybe a half a dozen flowers that are coming on. So the production out of, out of the slick pick is definitely more, uh, definitely more vigorous than the yellow, the summer, the yellow summer squash. All right. I'm going to be showing you first here the Haas slick pick. You can see we have quite a few ready and on this back one here you guys can see that I mean, they're just loaded in there and the yellow straight neck squash this is probably the best of the two you know they're not they're not uh it's not loaded but it sure it sure does have some fruit on it and this is the second second one we have one that is ready and three or four that are coming on strong but as you can see the if you want production and crazy amount of stuff on your squash i would definitely pick or choose the slick pick over the straight neck yellow squash now we planted these at the same time in the seed tray planted them in the pots at the same time, fertilized them with the same stuff at the same time. We did everything, everything was the same. And you know, you can see, I'm gonna kind of hold it up. Now the plants on the right side are the straight neck summer squash and the plants on the left are the slick picks. So you can definitely see the uh, the back two here. You know, this, this back one here and this one are definitely taller. So let's get these uh, picked and, and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the actual fruits. A little bee there. I like to pick them <clears throat> when they're on the smaller side rather than the larger side. You know, they're obviously, you know, more tender if you pick them small than they are when they get really large. I don't know if I can get this one. I'll hold the camera, I'll see. All right. Okay, so for the first pickings of the squash, it's uh, quite impressive for a slick pick. But let me show you that we do have several left over on the slick pick squash that I'm going to save for the end of the week. I don't want to pick too much because I like to eat them fresh. Um, it's in here we still have some that'll probably be ready by uh, by the weekend. And uh, the straight neck squash, there wasn't any even close to being ready. So just to show you that we did pick everything that was possible to be picked. And let me show you what the bounty the bounty was from the two. So it's quite uh, impressive for the slick pick versus the other one. Now this is off four plants, mind you, but we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus three off of the other one. 
So select pick in my mind is definitely a winner for production. Um, again, I don't expect much difference in the taste, but comparing the two side by side, this is just one of the average ones. Not the largest, not the smallest. Let's take this one. Um, you know, they look, they look fairly similar. Um, the straight neck's a little bit more warty. And the slick pick is probably by its name because it's slick. I don't know, but it's a little less warty. Um, color, the slick pick's a little bit brighter in yellow. Not much, but a little bit. But that's the two compared side by side. Okay, out here while picking up the squash here, I'll uh, do you a brief rundown of the rest of the things we have planted in the pot. So these are the Everglades tomatoes. I'm sure if you guys watched the previous videos, you remember when we planted these in the seeds and in the pots, and they're growing like gangbusters. Uh, the next one is uh, Sun Gold cherry tomatoes. You can see all these are they're getting there and we even have some blooms started finally on the Everglades which is kind of cool and we have blooms started on the Sun Gold. So it will be but a few more weeks on those. Again next one is the Everglades and we have some tomato or sorry some peppers in these and a pot full of dwarf sunflowers. <clears throat> peppers are obviously slow growing that's uh that's no surprise they're a slow growing plant anyway but let me show you the row of tomatoes we have. Okay, tomato row is looking awesome. They're all 12 to 80, 18 inches tall and they're all vigorous. Since we've treated for the cutworm, we haven't had any more problems or any more issues with worms at all, especially the cutworms. So everything we had in that, in that last planting survived. Um, the plants are just doing beautiful and keeping our fingers crossed that we can get some production out of this before our first frost of the year citrus we purchased several weeks back are doing good um, all but one of them one of them got absolutely destroyed by grasshoppers you can see these leaves here if you don't have citrus or if you do have citrus just know that uh, grasshoppers destroy the leaves of all citrus oranges grapefruit limes lemons all of them and I sprayed for them I sprayed some neem on this last night um, unfortunately neem doesn't work right away it takes a few days to kick in so hopefully we'll get that and it looks like he got this one overnight too there's some leaves on the bottom of the pot yeah they do some crazy damage on citrus so we got some fresh growth here on the bottom of this one which is nice so these are doing good slowly but surely they're growing. If I can keep the grasshoppers off of them long enough, we'll have some nice plants. And on this table, we have a couple eggplants growing fairly slow. And in this one, we have some breakfast radishes. As you can see, they're starting to pop. Radishes are really fun to grow for kids because they grow super fast. These are only about, oh gosh, I think these are three weeks old since we planted them. And uh, these should be ready in about another two weeks, probably. But those are fun to grow because they grow quick. All right, so I'm going to show you one more thing on the blossom and rot on the squash. So <clears throat> squash and tomatoes are super famous for getting blossom and rot. And if you don't know what blossom and rot is, this is what it looks like. You know, it gets smushy on the end. And what causes that is calcium deficiency. So if you don't have enough calcium in the soil, uh, you need to treat for that and put calcium in before. You know, if you can test it, put calcium in before. The plants go in um obviously if, if you can get it in the ground you're surely going to get it into a pot because there's you know if you don't treat for it and add calcium to it there's no way that the little pot like this is going to be uh, sufficient enough to have enough calcium in there to grow these you know large vigorous plants that that you know that need a lot of input to them to grow strong and healthy squash <clears throat> and tomatoes so that's what you get if you don't if you don't test or treat for calcium you get that blossom and rot not a big deal i knew it was going to happen in these pots it's happened before we just can't we can't put enough calcium to them sometimes and that's the result of it not a big deal i just wanted to show you some real stuff here that happens okay here are both of the squash all cut up side by side the one on the left is a 
is the straight neck summer squash and the one on the right is the Haas slick pick. There definitely is a difference between the two. Um, the straight neck yellow squash is a little bit paler and the slick pick seem to have less seeds and is a little bit darker in color. Um, they definitely look different cut up. All right, y'all, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you got something out of it, um, out of the comparison of the two different squash that we grew, uh, the yellow neck squash and the slick pick squash. We sauteed both of them in some avocado oil, some salt and pepper, some onions and garlic, and we could not tell the difference between either of the two. Uh, my wife and I both, we, we, we couldn't tell the difference. So as far as taste-wise, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. They're both delicious. Uh, Production-wise, Slick Pick, hands down, beat out the yellow straight neck squash, uh, probably three to one uh, ratio as far as producing. So, you know, if you're looking for a high producing plant, you know, the, the Slick Pick squash, hands down. Um, yeah, that's it. So I hope you got something out of it. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you here next time on the Kyle Family Homestead.